Inshallah we haven't had the question and answers for a few nights so we, if we have anything from our online group and uh, we see all the names all the time so alhamdulillah and uh, for all those people who are participating all the time and continuously commenting mashaAllah and if they have any questions to please email helpme at nurmuhammad.com and even if you don't have questions you can always email and say, Assalamu Alaikum, thank you or had a difficulty, the difficulty went and just keep in touch and keep the line of communication always open with helpme at nurmuhammad.com. Don't communicate in any other way or with any other person. If you want to reach me you email helpme at nurmuhammad.com. When the shaykhs set up a system there's all sorts of back-end support for that. One, I get your email, two, you'll get an email back from us and three, we already have templates been written for me so that I can send you the meditation, I can send you the introduction, I can send you the recipe for your COVID, I can send you the for this, for that, for nazar, for taweez. But if you communicate with us on different platforms because your nafs is requiring that, we don't have any of that backup support so most likely you won't hear back from us. So if you come through the door that they ask you to come through then the communication can be very clear and get the information that's needed and it has the barakah and the permission of the shaykhs to reach to that person inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Taala. Sayyidi what is the reality behind the two dots or nuqt underneath the Arabic letter Ya? I have no idea. <laughs> Shall we get to that in another time? <laughs> yeah. We didn't get to that part. But the, the two dots above, then are the. <coughs> yes, you ask me. The haq. <laughs> yeah, inshaAllah. We'll go to the one nukht now and we'll follow that nukht on each huruf and how that nukht has a power and a might. Right? So the ha. For hayat, because I don't know Arabic. But if you put the nukht on the top, he becomes what? Kha, the Khalifa, it's his crown. Right? So Allah put the might on his head, you're now crowned. He put the nukht into the belly, Jim, you can carry like Sayyidina Jibreel, send a light into your heart. We said from the levels of the heart you have to have Sayyidina Jibreel's light in your heart, in your soul so that why? The information can begin to come. The information in uloom al-Muhammadiyya, these knowledges of the Muhammadan haqqaiq, they have to come by Sayyidina Jibreel's light because it's the one who has permission to bring that. That's why in the Lataif al-Qalb it's yellow symbolizing the reality of the qalb and under the station of Sayyidina Jibreel and the Khalifa for that Sayyidina Uthman, Jami al-Qur'an al-Majeed because those are the studies of the Lataif al-Qalb. So it means that Sayyidina Jibreel's love has to come into the heart and begins to put that light that I don't have to keep coming and going, I know who you are as ashiqeen. I'm going to put my light into your heart so that this system I will connect of knowledges and, and these uloom to come into your being and into your reality, inshaAllah. As Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What should we do when someone accuses us of hypocrisy? When the negativity becomes too much, is it okay if we walk away from it to protect ourselves? Sure. Anyone accusing anyone this is a, a bad character <clears throat> and to, to have people who, who have bad character, exemplify bad character is, is not good. So those are not the people we, we wish to be around and this is a month and in this month we give that talk. Our spiritual path is based on acknowledging our own hypocrisy, Nahiwal munkar this verse of Qur'an al kareem that describes to tell people what they're doing wrong first has to be applied to yourself. When Allah signs that you are now a clean sincere servant then you'll be taught how to guide other people in a way that they won't be insulted by the way you teach. 
right? So the shaykhs never teach directly and say, you know, you're a hypocrite, you're like this, you're like that. They don't teach like that because Allah didn't sign a certificate to be like that. So then tariqah comes and teaches that you have to acknowledge on your spiritual path your own hypocrisy. If you don't, you're lying to Allah And that's why we describe that every time you're making tawbah every night, Ya Rabbi, don't let me to die as a munafiq. Well, I'm telling people one thing and I'm doing something completely different. I do like this or pretend to be a nice person and when the shaykh is not here I'm a very violent, angry person screaming and yelling. The, especially tariqah that anyone has to understand that if the shaykh is not here he's always here, he's always sitting on this chair. His wave reality is many places at the same time. Means that becomes all of the teachings of the turuq and the tariqahs is that you're vigilant, you're looking in your heart. Allah has angels watching, Allah has Prophet and shahidan, mubashiran wa nadiran that Prophet is watching you at every moment. If you don't acknowledge your hypocrisy and the bad things that you're doing then you're a hypocrite to Sayyidina Muhammad you're a hypocrite to Allah So how you can open your mouth to anyone else? Then Allah's qadab comes. You know if you're working on yourself and you admit that, oh I'm doing all these bad things, I'm trying to f- uh, you know stop it, I'm begging every night for forgiveness, give me strength, give me good character. But the one who goes and posts bad things about people, says something bad about people, then usually like a, a divine difficulty is coming towards that person. Because Allah says, what are you doing talking about other people when you don't see what you're doing all the time? So first step in tariqah is it admit my own hypocrisy, Layla anta subhanika inni kuntum min dhalimin That was our key to get in, that you have to admit, I am a dhalim and Allah's grace and mercy is the only thing that's going to save me from these difficulties. When the servant admits their weakness only then can Allah's najat begin to come, najil mu'mineen. If you don't say, I'm a zalim then you don't get the najat. Well how would najat, how the door of najat come to you if you don't say, La ilaha anta subhanika ni kuntum min ad-dhalimin fastajabna najayna min al-qab. It doesn't come, the second part doesn't come until you admit the first part. So the life was about admitting my bad character and my, my hypocrisy, don't let me to die as a hypocrite, don't raise me in the presence of all these beatific souls and say, oh look here comes one of those hypocrites that I'd be ashamed on that day in front of them, that let me to clean this bad character now and they spend night crying. They say, ya Rabbi every night I'm going back and see I'm still like that and I, I turn from love to hate in an instant and all these bad characteristics were the sign of hypocrisy. That which you love you die loving it. If you say you love something you die loving it. Anyone who changes from loving something to hating something is a hypocrite because they really didn't love, right? Love can change, you don't have to love it in that way but your love and your respect always stays. And because of that love you keep your good character and you, you do what is necessary. But it doesn't become hate, how does love become hate? Then it wasn't really love. Even people who have been abused in love, when they have good character they don't turn to hate, they just stay quiet. Look at all these awliya, uh, awliya of Sham, the, I think the… the uh, for the uh, Abdal, Hafif for Abdal, the Shaykh of Abdal his story that there were people that were always coming and ridiculing him, insulting him and every type of difficulty upon him. And when he found out that that man was sick who was insulting him all his life, he went to his door and said, I'm here to pray for you, why are you praying for me? He started crying, all my life I was saying horrible things to you, why are you coming onto my deathbed? Because they are the, the rijal of, of, uh, of muhabbat and love, they are the real who men that they're who of hidayat and wow of wadood, that they, they have a love from Allah their reward is with Allah not with people. So we're striving for that character, not the television, I hate you, 
and then two later, I love you again, I, I hate you, and no, this is munafiqeen. Unfortunately, that's only what children and people are watching of TV and learning only that character. InshaAllah. As salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. What does it mean when you say, Abdukal ajisu da'ifu miskeen zalima wa jahal? <laughs> is, that a, is that a Pakistani or Arab asking that? Because they know what it means. It looks like a, a Pakistani. Peter Sahib, as Shaykh Peter Sahib always says. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Sahib, yeah. Is it exactly what you see it to mean? That I'm admitting to myself because if you come out and saying that you're what, you're this, you're that, then you're, you're arrogant and you're faroon. So anyone who thinks you're good and pious, that's up to them. But me, I've admitted to myself I'm nothing and I admitted to myself before Allah and Abdul Qulajis. Abdul Qulajis is da'if, I'm weak, I'm… Uh, ajis is what, poor? Ajis what? Poor, weak, helpless, give me some more. <laughs> Are you thinking what you're going to call me? <laughs> no. All of those. So that I'm weak, I'm poor, I'm, I'm yateem, I'm cut off from everything. That you don't need to beat me Ya Rabbi, don't, don't, don't and you empty your cup. If you don't train your life, you may not be a teacher one day but if we're teaching, if I don't train to empty my cup and I come with my arrogance and talk from my head, everybody will go sleep. Because it's just my sickness coming out and dressing everybody and everybody unconscious like professors at school. But if you come saying that, I'm nothing, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm in need first to understand, give me a guidance and some hope within my heart. You come learning to be nothing and Allah fill your cup. But if you come with something full, Allah want to break your cup to make you to be empty again. So our life was that we don't need the heavens to come after us. To, to become and to train me, I'll take my own way of bringing myself down. So it's a difference. So when you're in Pakistan, the, we said many times, we go with this, this culture of the shaykh is coming, his awliya, his alama, ulama, alama, babaja. He's uh, all these huge titles and now he'll be speaking to you and thank you all much less. Naqshbandi never talk like that. You know, Sultan al awliya would talk and he would just say, nothing and inshaAllah, Allah, Allah and make a recitation. So the training was never to claim you're this, you're that, you have this title, you're that title. It's claim that you are nothing. If your audience cares to listen then alhamdulillah they're loving and sincere. If they turned off because of what you just said then let them go, it's better for them to go than to stay. So it's a, it's a path in which to be nothing inshaAllah. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, Sufi <coughs> kalam uh, trigger, can trigger cry, a crying condition. Can we listen to Sufi kalam in our meditation? <clears throat> yeah, the, 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 the kalam being like the knot and the salawats, yes. That uh, those you want to bring a ishq and a love of Allah and feel that you're in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's the ones that you would bring of those knots that are praising Prophet and then meditating that you had Rosa Sharif and you're with the shaykhs, you're with the presence of Prophet and then connecting your heart. And at other times you may just be in a meditation and just like to listen to all these other types of nasheeds and salawats, all of that is, is, is beautiful. And anything that moves your heart into a softness to feel that love and to feel that proximity then that's the time. So each has a time, so more softer nasheeds if I'm going to do my awrat in my meditation and then breathing and exercising. And the other ones may be the different praisings and different sounds and I feel that I'm in the presence of Prophet and then breathing and doing my breath. So alhamdulillah each, each has their own sort of focus at that time. But it's very important to hear these things and to contemplate. Because the sound opens the reality of the ears and the soul can move through sound. As soon as the hears a sound that it brings a, a love to the heart then the soul can be released through the hearing. 
And that's why the hearing is so significant, it can call your reality. And that's why children are listening to very bad sounds that calling them towards a very negative energy and that's the same danger. So it has the positive and then it has the negative. The ones whom are listening to bad sounds, why shaitan is bringing bad sounds? Is to pull them and dress them with negativity. And why Allah then calling us to good sounds and everything beautific and harmonious how they praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad and then all that energy that comes. And if they're going to listen to Qur'an then absolutely nothing else and just breathing and asking to see ourselves in that ocean of light and listening to the Qur'an and to be dressed. Allah says when Qur'an is recited stop everything else so that you can take its hikmah and its wisdom and just breathing from the might and the energy of it. Those who don't know the Arabic they should recite or memorize the verse they're about to play, what is this going to be reciting about and then close your eyes and then visualize those words and the reality and the energy of it dressing the soul. And that's how they, they do their tafakkur and contemplate and then Allah expand the knowledge of the words into the soul and into the heart inshaAllah. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, if I keep seeing the, the same ayah in my dream all the time, mm. for example, Ayatul Kursi, mm. what does this mean? The Ayatul Kursi you keep seeing? Inshallah that you, you, you're reciting it, it's a power to you and it's dressing you. That there's a difficulty either around you and it's coming at one time and then get up and recite it. Or if it's continuously dressing you and that you're seeing it all the time, Inshallah taking away difficulty from the servant inshaAllah. But alhamdulillah these are all good things, this, these are things that don't necessarily need to be understood to that extent. When good things come you say, alhamdulillah and if you know you're in a difficulty, you had a dream of Ayatul Kursi, get up immediately, wash, make wudu and start to recite Ayatul Kursi. It's a protection for you. But if you're continuously seeing all the time then it's addressing upon you inshaAllah and again always recite Ayatul Kursi. And if you recite the Naqshbandiya, the awrad that we have the Fajr etiquette, that all of these are in that Fajr etiquette and it's to be done every time at Fajr. So all Ayatul Kareem and all the du'as in Naqshbandi Fajr etiquette is from the Sultan, the King of all Saints. So whatever he was reciting he gave to us as an etiquette to recite which has all of these powers already locked into it, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What is the sunnah power of the turban? The sunnah power of the turban is the crown of the believer that Allah give them to identify with the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad as the angels are all in turbans means that anyone imitating a people will be from that people. Anyone reviving the reality of Prophet the sunnah of Prophet will have the reward of 70 martyrs. Can you imagine in this day Allah dressing you from the reward of 70 martyrs that just the turban you're wearing, imagine how many burdens it took away from what Allah was angered by from other issues in our life. But came the Ya Rabbi, the angels say he wore turban when he prayed. Seventy martyrs, what's the reward of one martyr? Yeah. And had an immense, immense reality. So in that time they didn't have a kafan, they didn't have a, an ambulance service. Remember in this life of ours that everything is coming at a like a press a button, you went to the desert you died. There was no ambulance service you call, they come they get you, then a washing service they come and wash you and, and, and then a kafan service you call they come and put a kafan on you, you died. So the guy next to you would take your turban off and wrap you. So it was a reminder of death that I wear upon my head my kafan, that at any moment death going to come to me. And death didn't come to me, I'm going to wrap it and make my prayer so that I get the reward and ajr and the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad I mean infinite amount of haqqaiqs and realities. At the same time the one that we have with the tail down the way that Prophet described is a meme. So here, look, 
it's a meme so that identify yourself as Muhammadiyoon and that you are from the Muhammadan nation and you carry the secret of that meme. And all this creation is in meme, Baina Ahadu Ahmad is what? Meme, no? because all creation is in Bahrul Muhit in this ocean of all encompassing. So mean, many, many different realities and haqqaiqs. So when you wear that crown and you know that knowledge then you're wearing the meme. So everything is about the Muhammadan haqqaiq, mala'ika are meme. Mu'min, mu'sin means they're memes. So when you wear that has immense dressing that angels saying, these are Muhammadiyoon. So they are carrying the, the, the identity of the king. Now if you lived in oppressive countries you had to have a mustache, right? If you lived in… yeah, because he had a mustache and your store had to have a mustache. <laughs> Yeah, but you're forced to do that. But to do it from ishq is something different, right? When a zalim tells you, I have a mustache, you wear a mustache, put a mustache on all your businesses. But when you do it from ishq and love, then you get the reward and, and the mercy of Allah I'm imitating Sayyidina Muhammad I'm imitating Sayyidina Muhammad Everything is to imitate that which you love. The other side knows that, that's why he said the zalims, they know that, you have to imitate them. You have to put their picture on everything. Why you have to put their picture on everything? Put the picture of awliya on everything because they remind you of the Muhammadan kingdom, not this earthly kingdom. They put their faces on even the currency and the money you put in your pocket. You can't get away from them. Especially the hypocrites, they come and say, well you have so many pictures, so give me all your cash then, give me your cash, give me… They go for Eid prayer with cash filled in their pockets. They're going on a mirage with all those faces. As soon as they say, Allahu Akbar then this, the people kill hundreds of thousands of people are in their pockets. No, tariqah comes and teaches us, don't put money in your pocket for ibadah, don't put anything in your pocket like that. You're going for mirage to Allah you're not taking those people. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it mandatory to disclose to your non Muslim family that you converted? What if they get aggressive? And, and, another, and another similar question <laughs> uh, If I take the tariqah, uh, do I have to look like a visible Muslim? People around me, if they act negatively, my family pushing me farther away? Yeah. No one is no. <laughs> No, Alhamdulillah Allah is no compulsion, there's no, no need to do these things. Whatever we teach is teaching from the shaykh and we pick and choose what is necessary for us to try to strive with. So we get an email and we've got to many times, so many things to do. So I don't remember saying there were so many things to do. These are what we do but nobody is forced to do them. You do what you can and everyone has a struggle, an internal struggle. And they're going to struggle what's important for them. They say, okay I'm going to abstain from this and I'm going to struggle in that way and I can do that. And then when I'm ready, oh my Lord I want a little bit more, then I go and do a little bit more. But nobody's forced to do this, you don't come and you're forced to put on your hat this and wear your beard like this and everyone has their own sort of speed in which they're going to be approaching. And you want to approach in a way to make yourself strong, your faith strong without so much outside interference. If people are going to oppose you and make difficulty for you then you hide it. You go in your room and you, you pray so nobody knows that you are praying, lock your door. Now do you have to call azan and scream in their living room and put your sajada? No, because this is not a political movement in which we want to bother people. This is a personal relationship with my Lord. If one day you have the a freedom to pray where you can then alhamdulillah but if you don't then it's not about making so much conflict that they push you out of your deen and you stop all praying altogether. Mm -mm, Allah doesn't want anything of difficulty, just slowly, slowly strive until it becomes stronger and then you challenge yourself to do a little bit more. But Mawlana Shaykh always said, take your religion like, a, like something beautiful that you can wear. 
and you wear it all the time. Allah, Allah, Allah loves consistency. But if you make your religion so heavy, so tough on you that every minute you're looking to where you're going to park it and leave it and run, don't do that. So be consistent, be sort of slow and, and keep trying to push yourself to, to reach to a higher understanding and a higher level inshaAllah. Is it possible that we can renew our bayah? Is it possible? InshaAllah. And with that note, inshaAllah, Subhana Rabbi Ka Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaam Al Mursaleen Muhammadillahi Rabbil Alameen Illa Sharif Al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ali Usabi Kiram Wa Alam Al Shaykhina Fi Tariqatina Shpandiyat Al Aliyya Wa Sayyidu Wa Saddatina Wa Siddiqeen Al Fatiha.